hello and welcome to this session on docker volumes and this is going to be a very easy and interesting session on understanding and creating docker volumes and a lot of people say docker volumes is one of the advanced topic on dockers and it should not be included at beginners level however i believe docker volumes is a very important and useful concept and with this session we will make it very easy and interesting and after this session you will be knowing all about volumes and how do we create attach and share volumes so we are going to see what are volumes uh, how to create list and delete volumes how to attach volume to a container and how to share volumes and then we will also see what are bind mounts so in docker whenever you create a container there has to be some place where the data for the container will be stored now in case you do not provide any explicit location for that data to be stored it gets stored within the container and when you delete the container or remove the container the data is also lost however when you work on enterprise projects we want that the data is not lost we can actually remove a container but still persist the data and in case it is required to create more containers with the old data or to share the data between containers it should be possible so before i actually start uh, showing you the commands uh, let me show you this use of volumes so it is used for decoupling container from the storage so the storage is separated from the container and even if you delete or remove the container the storage is still available uh, it is used to share volume or the data among different containers we can attach a volume to a container we can delete container but the volume will not be deleted so this is these are the main advantages or uses of volume and let me start and go to my terminal and let me also split my screen so you can see the notes as well as the terminal window now i am on a mac in case you are on windows you can use your windows command prompt or your powershell and on linux you can use your Linux command line and of course the prerequisite is docker should be installed on your system so you can run the command docker info or docker minus v to see the docker is installed and now we will see docker volume so you can run this command or you can say docker volume minus minus help both will give you the details on docker volume command and it is used like docker volume and the command and these are the options you can do create for creating a volume inspect to inspect a volume you can say ls to list the volumes prune will remove all unused local volumes and rm will remove one or more volumes so let us see and let us actually create a volume so i will just clear the console and i will say just for reference i will run docker volume and now i will say docker docker volume create and i can give any name i will i am saying my volume one so this is now created and i can use docker volume ls command to list the volume and docker volume inspect command and the volume name to get the details about the volume so this volume is created at this time and this is the mount point so this volume is available here on your system it cannot be edited by the functions locally so that is one of the advantages so this volume is safe now and the name is my volume one now of course if you want to remove the volume you can say docker volume rm and the volume name like my volume one here and if you want to remove all the unused volume you can say docker volume prune and if you say why it will remove all local vol volumes which are not in use by any one of the containers so as of now i will say n i just want to use this volume and let me just verify my volume is available i will say docker volume ls and yes this is available now let us see how can we use this volume so for example i want to start a jenkins container so what i will do is i will say docker pull jenkins and of course if you have any problems you can always go to google and go to docker hub and go to go to repositories 
and here I will search for Jenkins and I will go to the details now here you can see the pull command is this docker pull Jenkins and then you can run the command this to start the container so I will first pull Jenkins image and to save time I will just fast forward this process so the process of pull is complete I will clear the terminal and now I have to start the container so for that I will say docker run and I will use the minus p flag to expose the ports so I am saying uh, 8080 on the local system and 8080 on the server so the port 8080 of the Jenkins server will be exposed at port 8080 on my local system and for the APIs we are using 50,000 and I am exposing the same port here and the image name which is Jenkins now if I run this command it will surely start the Jenkins container and I will be able to have it running on localhost 8080 I can go to the browser and go to localhost 8080 and I will have my Jenkins running however I want to do some changes the first change is I want to give a name to this container so I will say minus minus name and I will say this is my Jenkins 1 and now the other thing I want to do is I want to attach a volume so I will say minus V flag and here I will give the volume name which is my volume 1 that I just created and this will correspond to the Jenkins home directory so you can again go to this location and it has also shown you how you can do this so here I am want all the data of Jenkins home to be available in my volume so this is what I will do here okay so what I'm saying here is let me just show you in a proper way here so what I'm saying here is docker run and I'm giving a name to this container and then I'm saying minus V my volume 1 this is my volume name and it should get data from where Jenkins home and then the rest of the process and I will just run this so this will start the Jenkins server on a docker container I will just copy this initial admin password and you can see Jenkins is fully up and running if I go to my localhost 8080 on the browser I should have my Jenkins up and here I will provide the admin password that I copied and I will say continue and here we are getting an option to install plugins I will just say select plugins to install and I'm saying none to all to save time and I will just skip this process and I will also skip this process and I will just start using Jenkins so the main idea here is to show how can we share the volume so what I'm going to do here is on my Jenkins I'll just create a new job I will say this is test job and this is a freestyle job and say ok and here in the description I will just give some build step and I will apply and save ok so if I go to the dashboard you can see on this Jenkins instant I have this test job created ok now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start another Jenkins container so I will go to a new tab of my terminal you can start a new command prompt on Windows and here what I'm going to say is I'm going to actually copy the same command to run the Jenkins container here so I'll copy it from here and give it here what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of the container so this is going to be Jenkins 2 and here you see I am giving the same volume that I used for my earlier Jenkins container and of course I have to use different ports because it is 88 is already in use by my current Jenkins so I will use 9090 and here let me use 60,000 and let me just run this 
now this will start another instance of Jenkins or a different docker container with Jenkins and once this is started let us see if the volume is shared between these two Jenkins or not now you can see this Jenkins is fully up and running now let me go to localhost 9090 so I will go to localhost 9090 now and you see it has not given us the initial plugin screen it is just giving us the login screen and I am going to login with the user that I had for the my old Jenkins and I will also copy the password of that Jenkins so I'm going to copy the same password and I will just give it here and say login so if this allows us to login that means the data is being shared between these two Jenkins containers and yes it allowed us to login and also you can see this has the test job as well here so the data is being shared between this Jenkins container which is running on port 8080 and this Jenkins container which is running on port 9090 so we are able to share the volume between these two containers and the volume will remain intact even if we close any of these containers or even delete or remove the containers we will still have our volume that we can use for any other container as well so you can also use bind mounts so bind mounts means you can actually use a physical location instead of volume so I will copy the same uh, command here for running a Jenkins container and here instead of using a volume so everything is same uh, let me just change the port numbers here let me use 70,000 here and let me use 9191 here and the name I will give is Jenkins 3 and instead of using a volume I am going to use a physical location on my system so I will say users Raghav desktop and I will create a folder Jenkins home so all the data of Jenkins home will get stored here and I will also show you it will be created here on desktop so if I run this uh, some issue so this is an invalid host port let me use something else like 40,000 and yes this should run and you can see a Jenkins home folder is created here and if I open this you can see some data is coming here okay so as this is running we will have some data copied here and you can see new files and folders getting added to this folder as our Jenkins containers is getting created so now this is fully up and running this Jenkins container if I go to localhost 9191 and yes you can see this is a new instance now we can do the same thing with this uh, as well if you want to create a new container and use the same uh, data like this Jenkins home which is now available physically on our system we can do that and now if I uh, let me show you I run docker ps command and we can see these three Jenkins containers are running and this is my Jenkins 1 2 and 3 let me stop these containers I will stop my Jenkins 1 and I will stop my Jenkins 2 and I will stop my Jenkins 3 and let me now again run the command docker ps and you see all the containers are now stopped and if I say docker ps minus a to list all the containers you can see these containers are available but they are stopped so let me also remove them. I will say docker rm my Jenkins 1 docker rm my Jenkins 2 and docker rm my Jenkins 3 and let me clear the terminal and if I say docker ps minus a now you can see there is no container everything is deleted however if I look at the volume and say docker volume ls you can see my volume 1 is still there and I can use this to create new containers or share the data with any other container uh, you can also say docker volume inspect my volume 1 and you can see all the details are here and also you can see 
our physical Jenkins home we created is also here intact all the data is here so if you want to create a new Jenkins server on a docker container with the same data with the same jobs plugins you can do this so this is going to be very useful in enterprise level projects so I hope this was very easy and now you understand the concept of docker volumes and you can now use it in your docker projects I hope this all was very useful and interesting to you I will meet you in the next episode of docker Thank you for watching.